everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today is Saturday the 23rd of December. We're two days away from Christmas and as you can see, uh, we're now harvesting the sugar beets. So you can see we've got the pile over there which has just started to come up. Um, there is a real bit of a storm today on the farm. So although it's really dry uh, and plenty warm enough for 11 Celsius at the moment, it is very windy outside so you won't hear on the microphone here. So we've got two uh, Q-Series Vevayet sugar beet harvesters going. There's a John Deere 6R250 uh, and a Fent, I believe it's an 800 series or a 900 series. It, I think it's a new one, I haven't seen it before. So we'll try and get some footage of that. Um, all in all, they are munching through this field. They're really getting a move on. Uh, there's another field over there to do. So they've got two to do in total. And this heap will be the main heap for this field. And then I'm not sure we've got to work out whether they'll cart the beet from the other field to this one or I think we might make a, a heap up there, providing it's dry enough. Um, as I said earlier, conditions are pretty good. Uh, this is quite unusual to have such a good uh, dry season like this. Last year, it was a lot wetter than this. And when they loaded the beet, it did make quite a mess. So we might be able to get away this year with not making a mess too much, fingers crossed. Um, of course, one of the biggest issues this year has been um, the damage, the deer have really damaged this crop quite badly and it did suffer earlier in the year from the drought. So we'll try and work out next year if we can ring fence some of these fields to keep the deer out. Um, another quite in interesting development has been the sugar beet price. Yeah, we had a quota which changed from, uh, you could have a fixed price of 40 pounds per tonne or you could have um, a, a separate price, which was 38 pounds per tonne, non-fixed, um, plus the market bonus. And I believe in the end, we went for the 40 pounds a tonne fixed price. So until the sugar beet goes in, we've got to find out how many tonnes we have. And once the sugar beet's been loaded and carted and taken into the factory, we'll then find out uh, how many tonnes we have, and we can work out the total cost of growing the sugar beet and the total cost from the factory, so how much we got paid for growing the beet. So it's all about working out whether this crop is profitable or not. And if I'm being honest, over the last five years, it hasn't really been the most profitable crop in the world, namely because of the deer damage and also the drought in the summer and the lower price as well. We, we were not receiving as much as we were per tonne for the sugar beet. So the price has gone up, it has made a big difference, but all of the other costs have gone up as well fertilizer, fuel, herbicides, fungicides, etc. So it's gonna be interesting to see this year when we get our tonnage back from the sugar beet factory. Um, like with all things in farming, it's up and down. And sadly, you're never gonna make a fortune, but as long as it pays the bills and there's a bit of a profit there to invest in something, that's all we'd like. And on, that's best case scenario. Of course, it, uh, it never goes that way. And um, it all depends on the commodity prices and whether or not they wanna keep pushing for producing our own sugar in this country. Something which has been a staple of Norfolk's crop rotation has been sugar beet, especially on lighter, sandy, well-drained soils. Um, we have grown it for the last 20 odd years and it has done really well. Um, yield wise, it's just really dependent on the, on the total cost per tonne and also whether or not it's damaged or eaten by the deer um, and also the drought can be an issue. So we've got these lovely tractors. There's this brand new Fent over here. We're just going to have a look at. I'm not sure which model it is, but we should find out what it is. Six R250 coming past. I think it's the new one. Ah. Lovely. What a sight. See, there's the Fent. Q616 Vivea. Paul said to me he prefers the smaller Vivea harvesters because they're as efficient nearly as the bigger ones. They do a six wheel version. And uh, they have just literally eaten this field alive so quickly. But yeah, have a look at this um, fent over here. What a tractor, what a beast. 933 Vario. Lovely. Looks like the, uh, the Gen 6. Uh, so I think that's Joe in there. I'll go and have a chat with him. What a bit of kit. What the 933. journey on the 
Fent 's stores we've got some calves these are Belgian blue cross calves and there's some Hereford crosses in here as well which I reared on the bucket and now they're grown up so they're being out outwintered on the stubble turnips which we planted after harvest and I've got some technology which I've been sent which might work for the fencing because I've had some issues with the voltage on the electric fence which I thought was to do with the earth and not getting the electric fence in right so I have here a tester so I can test the voltage of the electric fence for my store calves. Hopefully it'll work, we'll find out. But they are, at the moment, going near the bales. I'm gonna to have to fence the bales off tomorrow because that is a bit of an issue. So anyway, we've gotta go and put some electric fence tester stuff on. Fine, move. Right, go, let's go. All right, so um, one of the issues has been that the fence has been earthing out. We've had a few problems. If you have a look further down, the bulbs look absolutely fab this year. I've got my electric fence tester. The stores are being put on this lot and then they get to eat all of these turnips and then they get moved on. Ranger has been fantastic for coming out to checking them every day. And I've also used it as well with the sheep, which has been marvelous on the sheep trailer. Uh, but if you have a look down here, we have got some really good bulbs for the store calves to eat and also for the sheep as well, been marvelous. So if I put this tester together, we should be able to find out uh, where my issues are coming from on this electric fence because it's been draining the battery a bit too quick for my liking and I think it's to do with the earth. So luckily it's been quite mild. I can think of worse jobs to be doing this time of the year. Um, I've been scraping out the cattle as well this time of the year, making sure everything's clean indoors and then of course outdoors you have to check the battery. It's one of those jobs you have to do. And with this small key ring, uh, every time you go near the fence, it lets you know that the electric fence is there. So it's quite handy to have on your keychain if you accidentally electrocute yourself. Um, anyway, keep that in my pocket. And then I put the earth in on this one, the earth, and then we need the fault finder. So if I work out the voltage, it will say at the moment eight, and it's saying low battery, which, me which means that it's worked out that the fence line is low. So I'm gonna take the stores in in a minute for this evening, but I've got to work out when to put the next battery on. So the fence is low now, so I'm gonna to have to go and charge a battery up tonight. I did get another one from Halfords the other day, so I'll pop that on charge, make sure that's low charged overnight, and then it'll be full in the morning, ready to recharge for the electric fence. So the cattle can go out here over Christmas, uh, if it goes well. So if I go and check the other end, the other fence, I'll then calculate the voltage as well to make sure we're not losing any anywhere. But you can see they're scratching up against those bales at the fence baler earlier on in the year. I've got to put a fence around there because I don't want them damaging the bales. So I've just come to the other end of the field and I put the voltmeter on to find out the voltage and it's saying about nearly seven kV depending on where we go. So we've only lost about one kV in total, which isn't too bad. So I'm quite happy with that. The, it's saying the battery's low, I'll charge it up overnight and we should be there. So at the moment, we are just trying to keep these cattle in, keep the animals looked after. Uh, I've got the ranger I've been using here, which has been brilliant. I'll find out as well what the yield was for the sugar beet and let you know in a couple of weeks. It was drilled with a little 6 or 30 early on in the year. It was then sprayed by alcohol and sprayer and now it's been harvested by Paul with the sugar beet harvesters. Very soon it'll be loaded off as well. Um, so we do need to find out what the yield was and whether it's been a profitable crop to grow for this year. Thanks for watching. I'm gonna go and charge this battery up, let these cattle back in. Keep liking, keep subscribing and all of that good stuff. Uh, and I'll catch you on the next one. Click here to subscribe to the channel. And click here to watch another Ollie's Farm video.